Kate, you got a sore throat? Oh, nothing to worry about, Uncle Joe. Maybe I ought to mix some of the famous old Carson's remedy that never fails. Honey, lemon, juice, and kerosene. It's a sure cure. <laughs> Just the sound of that remedy could cure you. <laughs> How do you think you caught it? Well, I think that falling in the well at Betty Joe's place didn't help. I think you ought to go to bed. You've been hitting it pretty hard lately. <laughs> That's exactly why I can't go to bed. There's much too much to be done before the wedding. Kate. Don't worry. I can take full charge. <coughs> it's a funny thing, Uncle Joe, but what you just said returned me to instant health. <laughs> I think it should go just a little bit farther this way. Okay. One, two, three. Oops, too far. Bring it about six inches this way. Which way? That way. Steve. Well, that's what I like, a cuddly construction worker. They got any more like you down higher at home? We've got work to do. We want to finish in time for the wedding, don't we? You're right. Oh, no, the cannonball already. Well, let's go. We can't keep waiting. I know, but I wish we could keep working. I can't wait to see what it looks like finished. Uh-oh, I forgot my purse. <laughs> Well, back to the drawing board. Well, Mom, what do you think of this pattern for the maid of honor dress? I thought you decided on another one a couple of days ago. Oh, well, I did, but with that other pattern, I didn't care much for the hemline, and the sleeves, and the waist, and the neckline. <laughs> Sounds to me like the only thing left is a zipper. <laughs> I know, but Mom, I want everything to be just right. Well, honey, we've got a lot to do and very little time to do. I need a list of the things we still have to do. Let's see. Arrange for the flowers, get in touch with the photographer, make a menu for the reception, reserve the church. Honey, could you check with me later on that? You see, if I don't get the guest list finished and the invitations mailed out, we can hold the wet into the baggage car of the cannonball. <laughs> Come on, Bobby Joe, you can help me with my sewing. Charlie Gunderson? You inviting him? Well, certainly. He's an old friend of the family. But, Kate, all he shows up for is to eat. I'm warning you, that bird will clean down a house and home. <laughs> yes, Uncle Joe. <laughs> Hi. Oh, Steve, there's a letter in the box for you. Thanks, Mrs. Bradley. Boy, we almost missed the cannonball. Oh, how's that house coming? Terribly slow, but we'll get there. I'd have been over to give you a hand, but my double detached flip disc been acting up again. <laughs> Guess what? My folks are coming. Oh. Why, Steve, that's wonderful. Yeah, well, Dad's on his way to a business convention, so they're going to swing by here to get acquainted. How about that, shortstop? I'm going to get a chance to show you off. Oh, gee, that's terrific, but... Oh, Mom, we're not nearly ready. We've got the whole place to fix up, and, and I've got my wardrobe to get ready. And... Hey, it's just my folks, not Grace and the Prince. They're going to love you no matter what. Well, Steve, you know, first impressions and all. Believe me, Mrs. Bradley, they wouldn't want you to make any fuss. Now, right here in the letter it says, please don't let them make any fuss because we don't expect it. We just want to meet your Betty Jo, have one of her delicious meals, and see your dream house. Wait a minute, wait a minute. What was that about delicious meals? Yeah, who are you talking about anyway? <laughs> I was talking about you. You were talking about my meals? Me, Tomaine, Tessie? Oh, come on. Now, you're not that bad. And besides, when a fellow's writing to his folks about his girl, you just can't stick to the facts. <laughs> I don't know whether I like that or not. <laughs> well, I'm not going to say I've just become engaged to an adorable mechanic. Well, you know how it is, Mrs. Bradley. A guy writing home has got to lay it on a little bit. Of course. And, and don't worry, dear. I'll help you get by. Why, you cooked breakfast the other morning. Mom, serving a bowl of cornflakes isn't making breakfast. <laughs> Besides, maybe you can get me by, but what about the house? Oh, I forgot about that. I know. Well, think about it. One look at our dream house, and instead of sending a wedding present, they'll send us a care package. <laughs> uh, I'll need some hearts of artichoke, and a couple of cans of button mushrooms, 
and the best rolled roast you've got in the place. Gotcha. You're really going all out for these folks, ain't you? Well, after all, they're going to be Betty Jo's in-laws. I wanted to make a good impression. <coughs> Sam, do you carry any gargle? Sure. Sore throat? Oh, it's just a little thing. So, you see, it's very important that her first meal for them be a complete success. Of course, I understand. Her first meal? Is she going to cook it? Uh-huh. You're kidding. Oh, uh -huh, no. Oh, Kate, if you want to show her off, give her a chance. Don't let her cook a meal. Have her tear down a carburetor. <laughs> or shag a few grounders. Sam. Or go frogging in Miller's Pond. Sam. Anything but cooking. Sam, I've already given her a few pointers. And I'm going to be handy to see that she does okay. Oh, good. Otherwise, you better alert Doc Stewart. <laughs> well, speaking of the kids, how's her house coming? Well, not too good. And Steve's folks are expecting a dream house on the edge of town. Uh, from what I've seen of it, it's no dream house. And if a good breeze comes up, it won't be on the edge of town either. <laughs> well, we'll put that on the list to worry about. Morning. Oh, hi, Doc. We were just talking about you. Well, I don't doubt it. Next to the weather, I'm topic A in the valley. Hi, Kate. Hi, Doc. Uh, I'll be with you in a minute, Doc. Anything else I can get you, Kate? I will. Um... The gargle for your sore throat. <laughs> okay, Kate. Open wide. It's nothing, Doc. It's, it's just a little rawness. Mm -hmm. Open up. Go ahead, Kate. You might as well. He can't charge you for a house call because you're not at home, and he can't charge you for an office call because you're not in his office. I'll be a witness to that. I am waiting. <laughs> right to bed. Uh, I, oh, I'm afraid of that, Doc. I can't do it. I have so much to do. I know, the wedding and all. But if you don't want to come down that aisle on a stretcher, you'll listen to me. Oh, well, now, it might not be that bad. Could be just the 48-hour bug. But we're not taking any chances. Doc, I've got a million things to do, and I have house guests coming. Well, you just wear your prettiest nightie. You'll dazzle them. <laughs> oh. Mom, what are you doing? Honey, there is no use in my lying down because I couldn't rest anyway. Well, sure you can. Well, we'll take care of everything, won't we, Bobby Joe? Sure we will. And you've got to take care of yourself, right, Bobby Joe? Right. After all, you know what they say. What? You don't know? <laughs> no, dear, I don't. <laughs> Gee, I thought sure you were. <laughs> Here we are, Mom. Some nice hot tea and cookies. Look, I, I have just decided I'm not going to be an invalid. Not right now, anyhow. Mom, Doc Stewart said you were Doc to say... Stewart is a dictator. He may know about sore throats, but he knows nothing about being a mother. Now, no reason for me to lie down because I couldn't rest anyhow. Hi, Kate. Going to take it easy, huh? That's a good move. I believe in that. Uncle Joe, <laughs> Mom says she won't lie down and rest. Will you convince her she's wrong? Why, oh, it's a cinch, Kate. I realize it ain't easy for us dynamos to unwind. We just gotta force ourselves to do it for our own good. Now, here's the three easy steps. First, you take a big yawn. Then, if there happens to be a snack around, that helps. Now comes the hard part. Forcing yourself to lie down. <laughs> then you stretch out. <sighs> then you relax. And before you know it, you. <laughs> you know, in his way, he's kind of a genius. <laughs> Do I look all right? Really? You look beautiful. Do you think your folks will like me? Oh, darling, of course. Are you sure? If they don't, I'll get a new set of folks. <laughs> you kids already? Oh, good. Of course, as usual, we're already in the cannonballs late. <laughs> Should be here right this minute, though. It's here. Let's go. Wait for me. Mom, what are you doing here? You're supposed to be in bed. Doc Stewart better not hear about this. 
Oh, he doesn't have to know. You don't think I'd miss being on hand when Steve's folks arrive, do you? Let's go. <laughs> Besides, I'm going to be out in the kitchen coaching you while you're getting dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look at you. You look just great. <laughs> well, we finally got here. Mother, Dad, I'd like you to meet Mrs. Bradley. Oh, Hello, I'm delighted to meet you. <laughs> How do you do? Hello, Mr. Elliott. And this is uh, Joe Carson. Oh, well, we've certainly heard a lot about you. <laughs> and this is Billy Joe. Billy Joe. Hello, nice to meet you. Bobby Joe. Hello. And... <laughs> oh, Steve. <laughs> Betty Joe. Hello, Mrs. Elliot. Mr. Elliot. Hi. <laughs> Welcome to the Shady Rest. Thank you. Can I get your luggage? Oh, Steve, this is such a wonderful oh. night. Oh, hi, Doc. Hi, Steve. <laughs> Hello, Kate. I, I made a miraculous recovery. That medicine you gave me did the trick. I didn't give you any medicine. That's why I'm here. As directed. And back to bed immediately. He has such a wonderful train side manner. Yes, does he? Now you just remember. Follow directions. Okay, Floyd! Floyd! <laughs> Donald, isn't this lovely? Yes, indeed. Quiet, restful. Thank you. Oh, speaking of rest, we'd feel very badly if you didn't follow doctor's orders, Mrs. Bradley. Now, please don't feel obligated to entertain us. Oh, I'm fine. No, 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 we insist. Matter of fact, we'll give Betty Jo a chance to show off that cooking we've heard so much about, right, dear? Uh, yes. <laughs> year we'll have our helicopter service in operation, giving direct service to all the major air terminals around. I didn't know you flew helicopters. D neither did I. Well, don't worry about it. I'll train you. <laughs> Maybe you didn't know I was a whirlybird man back in WW1 in the Secret Service. Well, I didn't know they had helicopters in World War I. Oh. Oh. That was one of our secrets. <laughs> it's interesting how they came about. We had this cockeyed inventor making planes for us. One day, this nut put a propeller in the wrong place. Well, sir, I took it out to give it a test run, and it went straight up. <laughs> hey, come to think about it, this may still be classified top secret. Maybe we ought to change the subject. I was just taking something up to Mom. Come in. Joe, I'm not hungry. It's not for you. Could you tell me what's wrong with this sauce? Did you follow the recipe? I thought I did. Uh -huh. Maybe it was something I left out. Really? Believe me, it was nothing you left out. Pretty bad, isn't it? Well, I just... You know, I've been taking this horrible taste in medicine that Doc Stewart gave me, and maybe I'm not judging it fairly. You are. I tried some out on the dog, and he took one sniff and crawled under the stove. Oh, throw it out and start over. Yes, dear. Be careful where you throw it. I mean, everything's going to be okay. You just 
keep pitching. So, these folks sure are a lovely couple. She's so attractive. And Mr. Elliot's so robust and athletic. I hope he's still that way after he eats this meal. <laughs> I wish I could help. Oh, uh, let's see. Oh, I still have to make the salad. Well, you could look up the recipe for rope for dressing for me. Sure. <laughs> Now I'm working on an electronic breakthrough in our crop dusting subsidiary. Well, if you're in business these days, you have to keep up with the times. That's my theory exactly. Now, you see, Steve here uses the old-fashioned method of crop dusting. He'll swoop down over a crop and spray it with an insecticide. And you're going to improve on this method, Joe? Yeah, that's got to go. My new idea, I attach this giant vacuum cleaner on the bottom of his plane. He swoops down over the crop. You know what you get? A giant vacuum cleaner filled with bugs. Yeah, that too. But with all those bugs, we got the start of a new company. Fish bait business. <laughs> now on, I'm going to expand in it. Oh, for Mom. <laughs> I'm sorry to bother you again, but there's something wrong with my rope for dressing. Oh, let's see. Oh, looks like rope for dressing. Doesn't taste like broke for dressing. I can't figure it out. Bobby Joe read me the recipe from the book and I followed it word for word. Blue cheese, vinegar, olive oil, brown sugar, chili sauce. Hold it. Brown sugar and chili sauce? Yeah, that sounded kind of strange to us too, but that's what it says. Let me see. Page 103. Let's see. An inch and a half of blue cheese crumbled, tablespoon of tarragon vinegar, quarter of a cup of olive oil. Um, here we go. One cup of brown sugar, one cup of chili. Oh, <laughs> the pages were stuck together. You got in the recipes for barbecue sauces. <laughs> Did you have stage fright the first time you sang professionally? A few butterflies. <laughs> I understand this happens to even seasoned professionals. I was reading this article by Helen Hayes, and she said that... <laughs> you know, for a sick woman, Mrs. Bradley certainly has a hefty appetite. <laughs> Me again. Say, you do look familiar. Things are going from bad to worse. Well, looks pretty good. <laughs> you, you got it nice and solid. <laughs> this whole dinner's gonna be a catastrophe. Look, honey, I'm going down to the kitchen with you. But you're not supposed to get up. It's not gonna kill me. We'll sneak down the back stairs. I'll give you a hand. Come on. I just don't understand how I could get this so tough. But, honey, it isn't a total loss. String is tender. <laughs> Hello. I didn't mean to intrude, but I thought I detected a need for a little help out here. Is that ever an understatement? <laughs> Mrs. Elliot, I apologize. I was silly to think I could fool you. I'm afraid Steve got a little over-enthusiastic about Betty Jo's cooking ability. <laughs> <laughs> now, don't you feel bad. The first three months that I was married to Steve's dad, I wore out six can openers. <laughs> you see, instead of being in training with an egg beater and a spatula, she was working out with a screwdriver and a monkey wrench. Well, that's not bad either. Now, Mrs. Bradley, why don't you get back upstairs to bed? Well, we're going to show them what this daughter-in-law, mother-in-law combination can do. Uh, but this is supposed to be my cooking. What will we tell Mr. Elliot? We won't tell him anything. You'll be out here in the kitchen. He'll be in there in the dining room. You will serve him his dinner and let him draw his own conclusions. But that's great. 
But, Mother, uh, Mrs. Elliot, oh, wouldn't that be, well, cheating the word you're looking for? Yes. That's what I like. An outlaw in law. <laughs> well, that was a wonderful dinner. Son, you're just like your old man. You really know how to pick them. <laughs> you know, when I was bachelor shopping around, that was my first requisite. That the little woman would be a terrific cook. <laughs> Well, son, your mother and I are really looking forward to tomorrow. Tomorrow? Yeah, for the personally conducted tour of your dream house. From your letter, it sounds like the ideal honeymoon cottage. Well, yeah, but uh, I uh, don't know about tomorrow. Uh, yes, with uh, Mom sick in bed and all. <laughs> well, well, surely there are enough people around here to look after her while we're gone. Oh, but she had her heart set on going with us. Uh, Donald, why don't we wait till we come back here for the wedding? That way, Mrs. Bradley can be included. Fine with me. I don't really see the point. Well, I've got good news for you folks. Mrs. Bradley will be up and around again in the morning. Fortunately, she was only hit by the 48-hour bug. Well, good. That means we can go ahead with our plans to see the house tomorrow. <laughs> Isn't it a little out of the way? <laughs> well, it's, it's got privacy, Dad. Lots of privacy. Oh, it sure has. Well, Donald, when you're in love, it doesn't matter where your dream cottage is. No, I suppose not. Just so it keeps out the wind and the rain. <laughs> What's that? Oh, nothing, nothing at all. Uh, th th this, this way, folks. You know, I was just thinking for a wedding present, there might be a thing or two needed for the house. Yeah, there might be a thing or two, all right. <laughs> What's the matter? I was just thinking. If the earth would only open up and swallow us. Come on, be brave. I mean, all they can do is hate it. You go first. Uh, look, uh, try, to try to understand. I know that uh, Steve said it was a dream cottage, but, uh, you know, the old saying, love is blind. So don't expect too much because it's... It's, uh, what's the matter? Oh, it's beautiful. Betty Jo, Steve! <laughs> Surprise! 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 <laughs> oh, Steve! Oh, Mr. Drucker, did you do all this? Yeah, darn tootin' we did for the swellest couple in the valley. <laughs> right, men? Right. Happy wedding present, kids. Sam will never be able to thank you enough. Oh, Sam, fellas, it's, it's just wonderful. Well, I'll tell you what I think. With friends like you, these kids can't miss. <laughs> oh, yeah. Just a second. There's one more fella that ought to get credit for helping out on this. Yeah, well, that's good. <laughs> Get with it. We got a job to tell you. Well done, man. <laughs> presentation.